Hey everybody, it's Dr. Good. Uh, just weighing in a little bit uh, on Chris Dinker's story. So I know you've uh, listened to his uh, wonderful podcast and just sharing like such an uplifting story about uh, about him and his family and and skiing together. Uh, so um, it really has been it's pretty pretty awesome to take care of them, right? Just a family that has dealt with some other medical stuff, right? I'm a spine surgeon. I'm not an expert in. In, in, in the lungs, but to see his, his boys come, come through everything they've gone through and be together is amazing. Uh, that made it all the more important for him when he finally had to deal with his back issues to find a way to get out of pain and stop the nerve damage, but also stay functional, right? After everything the boys have been through, he's gotta stay on the mountain with them. Uh, and so if we look at what, what he was dealing with, it's a really common situation uh, that really dates all the way back to a teenager. Many of us will get a stress fracture in our back. It's called isthmic spondylolisthesis. And so if we look at a side view of the back, you can see the vertebra, right, the bones, and then the discs are the cushions in between. Uh, and so a spondylolisthesis is when one bone slides forward on the other. And so if we look at how these bones are all lined up, we can see this step on right here. And there was a stress fracture, and over time one bone slid forward on the other, and not only does that trigger back pain for people, but the little nerve that comes out right there gets compressed and that can cause, you know, things like sciatica down the leg, pain, numbness, and weakness. And you get to the point where you just can't do anything. And so that's really when they sought me out. The reason they sought me out is they, they knew uh, they needed to have something done about this. But the concern is, how do I stay functional? How do I stay mobile? And then uh, they, they've heard the horror stories. Well, if I have a fusion, what's that gonna do to my other discs? If, is one fusion gonna make my next disc go bad even faster? And so making sure they chose the right treatment um, for the long run was really a, a big factor in terms of how they, they found us at VSI and, and made it you know, worth really kind of a long drive to get up and see us. So if we look at his MRI scan, again, this is a focus on the area where the, the spondylolisthesis is, but the real concern for him is that we're starting to see some issues in the next discs above. And so in this scenario, doctors and patients are up against a hard choice, right? This level is unstable. The only way to fix it currently is to fuse it, meaning something that will weld those bones together. But if those other discs are already hurting, then the surgery at that one level might not be enough. On the other hand, the more levels you fuse together, the more spine movement you end up losing. And so we're in this struggle we want to fix everything, get the pain to go away, but we don't want to fuse the whole spine together and take away the movement. And so for Chris, we actually did a test, and what we found um, was not only was this level an issue, but this next disc up was starting to bother him and really degenerate. And so what we proved with uh, this test called a discography was if we only fuse this level, he was still going to have pain. And if we fuse this level with a bad one already on top of it, the odds are that would have continued to hurt, but then gone even worse very quickly. And so we came up with an idea that we felt like we needed to treat both surgically, but we talked about doing a motion preservation option, a disc replacement here. And so what we're trying to do is, is fix spondylolisthesis, um, or we're going after sciatica or a pinched nerve. Uh, and then the goal is to preserve movement here. And so what we did is we went in the front and we put in a cage and, and literally bone graft that welds this bone, these two bones together. But at this level, we did a disc replacement, which is metal articulating with plastic so it moves. And so if we look at what that looks like, here he is after surgery, this is the level where it was slipping. And we can see now that's aligned better. This level doesn't move anymore. But by doing a disc replacement at this level, we've preserved the movement. And so now he's able to train, move, he's getting back, uh, back on his skis, and he's gonna be able to compete and, and have more flexibility in his spine. And by keeping this level moving, we actually be that's gonna do good things from the future because keeping this level moving should help to prevent more rapid degeneration of the next one above. And so ultimately it's all about like, which levels have to be treated now, what does the future hold, and anything we can do to preserve movement we think is inherently good now, but especially beneficial over the long run as we continue to live our lives and other things can wear out.